Good morning, everyone. I want to invite you guys to stand up. Great announcement today. Uh, our friends Josh and Dania are back from Germany. They've been in Germany for the last, is it six months? Seven months. So really, really thankful to have them back. So, but let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for uh, the gift of freedom that you've deposited in our hearts as believers. Lord, we ask that we uh, would be able to connect with you this morning. Lord, that our communion would be real. It would be more than tradition. Bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
Welcome to God's house. You may be seated. It's a joy to be here with you to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus together. Just a few announcements before we continue with our worship service. Uh, one, as you walk through the sanctuary doors, you should have received a, a bulletin, but also a square welcome card. And I want to invite you to please uh, go ahead and fill that out. We want to know that you're here worshiping with us. And on that card, there are blank lines there where you can write any prayer requests you may have and how we can be praying for you, uplifting you, encouraging you in your walk with the Lord. Um, today is a special day. It's the beginning of a whole week, a whole celebration of National Lutheran Schools Week, where we get to celebrate the school ministry and, and the ministry that God does through our teachers and through our principal and how we form students to be connected to Jesus, followers of Jesus. And so uh, today uh, we'll see a video highlighting our school ministry. Our gospel reading will also be the theme verses for our National Lutheran Schools Week, where all of our church body, all of our schools in our church body are celebrating uh, together. <clears throat> uh, something else to kind of keep on your radar. Um, if you haven't heard, we got a new DCE, and her name is Andrea. Um, she's going to have a children's message uh, here at the service, but also something exciting. Um, she's going to have a few town hall meetings for her to meet with the parents of high schoolers and middle schoolers. So if you're a high school parent, and, and high schooler, I encourage you, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, between our two services, uh, Andre is going to invite you into the youth room, and just a chance to meet her, get to know her a little bit better, and kind of talk about what youth ministry for high schoolers is, is going to look like uh, going forward. And then next Sunday, uh, the Sunday after, rather, February 4th, for middle school families and middle school uh, parents, again, there's an opportunity to gather and meet with Andrea and kind of talk about what ministry um, looks like um, for middle schoolers um, going forward. So keep that on your calendars, and hopefully uh, you'll have a chance to meet with her and talk with her about that. Um, another uh, really neat opportunity to get connected um, here at Bethany, it's called Graceful Dining. If you haven't heard of it, it's, it's kind of like what it sounds. It, you, you get together with a group of people, and you dine together. Uh, you share a meal together. It's a great way to get to know other people, other believers um, here at Bethany. Um, so you get together with a few people, and you dive into God's Word, and you eat and share meals together. So I encourage you, if you're new to Bethany, if you're looking for a way to get connected, that's a great opportunity. There's sign-up sheets as you kind of leave the sanctuary. Um, there's a big banner about it, so I encourage you to sign it up. Or if you have questions about it, you can talk to Donna Peterson, and she can get you all signed up for that. Uh, a really um, neat opportunity that I was just made aware of a, a few days ago. Um, for those of you who don't know, we partner with a missionary. His name is Ben Helge, and he serves in the Czech Republic. Um, he's been over there for many years, but we, we support him financially. We pray for him um, during uh, specific months. But another opportunity that has come to our attention is he's looking for American volunteers to join him overseas uh, to help lead a vacation Bible school for kids. Um, so we, you get to go over there in, in Europe, and you get to teach English, but you also get to teach young kids about Jesus. If that's something that you're interested in, the trip dates are July 3rd through the 15th, so it's coming up, it's coming quickly. If that sounds like you'd be interested in that or you want to learn a little bit more about that, you can contact Dana Bowler, and she can get you all the information you need. But it sounds like a really cool opportunity, and the goal and the hope would be to send maybe four or five people from Bethany to go lead a VBS, to teach kids English, but also get to teach them about Jesus. And so uh, I encourage you to pray about that, think about that, and talk to Dana if you have any questions. And um, last but not least, during the season of Lent, which is uh, quickly approaching, uh, we're doing a being challenge. It, it's a church-wide study, and um, the elders have decided that they're going to give one book to each household for free. So you get a free book. So if you haven't gotten your book already, I encourage you to stop by the table on your way out and get your free book and sign up for a Bible class that you want to go to. If you're the type of person who doesn't like to share with your other family members and wants your own book to write in, um, on the back of this book, uh, there's a website you can go to, and you can order as many books as you would like. You could share them with all your friends and family. Um, but we're doing this being challenge uh, through the season of Lent. Um, Lent is starting. It starts on Ash Wednesday, which is uh, Valentine's Day this year, ironically. But um, so we'll, we'll really start 
Uh, February 17th and 18th, so that weekend will be our first time really diving into this. Along with that, the elders have also decided um, in order to give us the full Bible study hour. There are some Sundays when, especially at the early service, if there's communion, you know, we don't get out of here until, you know, close to 10 o'clock and Bible study doesn't start on time. So what the elders have decided to do is for Lent um, to extend that Bible study hour. So this service, starting February 18th, it won't start at 1045, but it will start at 11. So just 15 minutes extra just to make sure we get through this material because we're doing it as a church and we're studying together. So again, February 18th, our, this service time, it won't be 1045, but it will be 11, just to give us a little bit extra time to make sure we get through all the stuff we need to get through in Bible class. Um, those are all the announcements I have for you. Well, actually, I have one more. Um, it's National Lutheran Schools Week, and we're going to talk a lot about Bethany and what we do here in this place. But we also support uh, the Kansas City High School. And uh, the Kansas City High School principal, executive director, he's a member of our church here, um, Adam Kirsch. I want to invite you forward and just share a few words, updates about their Lutheran High School in Kansas City. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to, to just share a couple of words this morning and uh, for being uh, a part of the worship service today. Uh, my name is Adam Kirsch. I usually sit right over there during this service, uh, but I don't usually wear a shirt and suit uh, and tie to, to this service. Uh, but uh, it's a joy to be able to be here. My, my family uh, was fortunate to be able to move to the Kansas City area this July to take over this position as executive director at Lutheran High School. And uh, I've spent a lot of years in Lutheran education, and it, it's really my calling, and it's really my joy and my passion to be able to speak about Lutheran education. And certainly today we say thank you to Bethany, because it is such a vital part of the ministry here when you can see young people being impacted by the gospel in your midst. It enhances the entire mission of the congregation. So thank you to Bethany for your support uh, of Bethany School, but also, also the support for Lutheran High School of Kansas City, for your prayers, for your financial support as individuals and as a congregation, and also for the partnership that we have in serving the young people that are entrusted to us. My favorite Bible verse when we talk about education comes from Psalm. And there the psalmist says these words, We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children, so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God, would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. The Lord has laid out here in the Psalms, but also in other parts of scriptures, the responsibility and the duty that we have as parents for our children, as grandparents for our grandchildren, because as the psalmist says, it extends generation after generation and generation. And, and this is for a people who went through generations where they forgot God, uh, they neglected him, uh, they lived their lives apart from him, and he continually had to send individuals to remind them of the covenant relationship that they had with that Lord. And my fear, and I think a lot of people's fears, is that that message would be lost. That, that we would forget what God has done and what he continues to do, and we would neglect our responsibility to ensure that our young people hear that message of God. And schools provide the opportunity to come along families and parents and grandparents to carry out that duty. I think all of us would probably recognize that the world in which we were raised is different than the world that our children and that the generations to come are experiencing. The, the problems are more plentiful, uh, the, the challenges are greater, and where we had as a foundation our Lord, we need to ensure that our children have that same 
uh, foundation rooted on Christ as well, being connected to him. And so that's the opportunity that we have. It, it is a part of our legacy. It goes back 150 years where th- this guy who is the, the leader of our church, uh, the, the very first president of the, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, recognized that the way for us to have healthy congregations is, is to make sure that we focus on our kids. And that that is going to be the nursery for the church going forward, that it doesn't die off. And so in your bulletin today, there's a little insert that talks about the impact that Lutheran schools have. Uh, About 850 elementary schools, 100 high schools, six universities, and two seminaries that all are positioned to equip our students, our our young children with that gospel-saving message of Jesus Christ. And so what a privilege that we have uh, to be able to do that. Uh, What a a responsibility all of us have in in carrying that out as well. Uh, At the high school level, one of the things that we recognize is that our opportunity is to help take those students who are 14 years of age, uh, who are really under the authority of their parents and Allow them that space to mature, founded and rooted in God's word, connected to him, but with the understanding that we send those children out uh, into the world. Uh, Christian education is so vital. I saw this quote the other day. Uh, It is so important that we properly equip our students in their identity, who they have been created to be as God's chosen children, And then also to give them that understanding of the purpose that God has laid on their hearts and how they can serve uh, their community and this world and the kingdom of God. Uh, So our mission at uh, at Lutheran High School, prepare lives for today, send them out as, as servants into the world for tomorrow, and ultimately to make sure that they understand who they are as God's saved children uh, for all of eternity. Once again, thank you for, uh, the support that you give to Bethany, the support that you give to Lutheran High School, and uh, our thanks to you uh, for this opportunity to share just that gratitude today. Blessings on our worship. Please rise as we begin our worship this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess together. Merciful God, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you that I often do not live how you desire me to. There are many times when I act independently from you, rather than one who belongs to you. Father, continue to keep me connected to you. I pray by the work and mercy of your Son, Jesus, to be gracious and merciful to me a sinful person. Now the moment for silent self-examination. The good news for us this morning is that Jesus Christ has come to this world and out of his love and mercy for you has connected himself to you giving you life, giving you forgiveness that you didn't deserve, but he loved you so much he gave it to you anyway. And he went to the cross for you to take your sins away, to remove them as far as the east is as from the west. Jesus has connected you to the family of God and now calls you a child of his. And it's a privilege and a joy this morning that as a pastor, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus, I now forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. I invite you now, please go ahead and share that peace that you have received from Christ. Share it with those sitting next to you. Welcome them into the house of the Lord.
I invite you now to return to your pew, and you may be seated as we continue service uh, uh, with readings from God's Word. Our first reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. What I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they had none. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it's not theirs to keep. Those who use things of this world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. This is God's word. I invite you now to please rise as we continue our service with a reading from the gospel. The gospel reading today in our theme for National Lutheran Schools Week comes from John 15, starting at the first verse. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to please be seated. I want to invite forward our DCE. And she has a children's message for our kids today. So I want to invite the kids forward too.
invite you to stand as we sing. I'll sing, Jesus, have my heart, my will, my soul. Jesus, have my hopes, my dreams, my world. Jesus, have my heart, my will, my soul. Jesus, have my dreams, my world, my world. With joy I lay it down, with joy I cast my crowns. Jesus, have it all. seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy National Lutheran Schools Week. It's a chance to celebrate what our God is doing through school ministries, the, the ministry that he's doing through different teachers and principals, different leaders for our kids, for our youth as we're equipping and training kids in our schools to be followers of Jesus, to be closely connected to Jesus. The, the theme for this National Lutheran Schools Week is the theme connected, and the, the verses that it comes from is John 15, verses 1 through 5, and I want to share those with you one more time. Jesus, he's talking, he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. In our gospel reading today, Jesus, he's using the image of him being the true vine. And he's saying that people connected to him, the church, they're the branches. And he says that those 
branches that bear fruit, he says that the Father, the vine dresser, prunes that it may grow more fruit. But Jesus, he says those branches that, that don't bear any fruit, he says that they're taken away, that they're cast away. And so we hear these words from Jesus, and he says that those branches that remain in him bear much fruit. So maybe the question on our minds as we hear these words from Jesus from John 15, maybe the question that you're thinking is, how do I bear fruit? How do I bear fruit for God in this world? How do I bear fruit of God's kingdom in this world? What does that look like? Well, there's a few different ways that people could answer that question. The first answer people could have is, how do I bear fruit in this world? Some people might say, well, I have to do a bunch of stuff for God. Maybe they say, in order to bear fruit, I have to get my hands dirty. In order to bear fruit, I have to devote hours and hours and hours of service to God. Maybe people say, if, if I come to church every Sunday, and if I give God an hour of my time every day in prayer, then maybe I'll get to bear some fruit. Or perhaps people would say, if I spend hours serving the community around me, maybe others will begin to see the fruit that I'm bearing. People who are only focused on what they're doing to bear fruit for God's, bear fruit of God's kingdom in this world, people who are only focused on the things that they're doing, I, I imagine them being like a tree, in, in our world, a tree in the wilderness, a tree in our neighborhoods. And, and, and this tree is robust. It, it, it looks strong. It, it looks established like it's been there a long time. It, it looks like a healthy tree. But on the inside of this tree, it's hollow. On, on the inside of this tree, it's rotting. The, the branches of this great tree, this established tree, they're expansive. But the tree lacks fruit. People who are only focused on the things that they're doing to bear fruit for God in this world, perhaps they're overlooking the life that Jesus has given them. Perhaps their works have turned into some form of proof of how great of a Christian they are, how great of a person they are to other people around them. Perhaps they're so focused on, on what they're doing that they're missing the one thing necessary to produce fruit in this world, fruit in God's kingdom. And that's faith in Jesus, a, a dependence on Jesus, being connected to Jesus. So maybe you're thinking, well, well maybe if it, if it doesn't rely on what I do, maybe another way to bear fruit in this world is to learn as much as I can about Jesus, to, to learn as much knowledge about Jesus as possible. Today, today in our world, social media is used by almost everybody. You can go on Facebook, or you can go on Instagram, and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter or X or whatever it's called nowadays, you can connect with different people, people that you may know really well in, in real life, or, or people that you've never met before. On Facebook, you can become a friend, and Instagram, you can become a follower, and you can follow different people, and you can get life updates about what these people are doing. You can learn about different celebrities and, and what they like to do in their free time, or what hobbies they like, or, or what charities they're supporting. Your friends and family that you maybe have, don't talk to very often, you can be connected to them and learn about what's going on in the lives of their kids What's going on in the lives of their grandkids? On social media, you can connect, you can become followers, you can connect with different people and gain all this knowledge about them. But the knowledge that you gain about them, it, it can be from a distance. You, you can gain knowledge about somebody by scrolling on your phone or, or, or going on your computer. You can learn all about these different people without ever interacting with them without ever talking to them, without ever having a, a conversation with them. Today in, in John 15, Jesus, he says, that he is the true vine, and we are the branches. 
He says that those branches that remain in him will bear much fruit. But apart from Jesus, he says, you can do nothing. I think there are some people in our communities, in our lives, who, who treat their relationship with Jesus, they treat it like somebody using social media. They, they gain all this knowledge about who Jesus is, but they keep Jesus at a distance. They, they gain all this knowledge about what Jesus did, or all these knowledge about Bible stories, or all this knowledge about who Jesus is, they keep them at a distance. All this knowledge they gain, it, it stays in their heads, but it, it doesn't affect their hearts. Being connected to Jesus in order to bear fruit in this world is more than just knowing about Jesus. It, it's more than just knowing facts about who Jesus is. Being connected to Jesus in order to bear fruit for him in this world, it's more than just knowing about him but it's living out your relationship with Jesus. It's living out the relationship that he's called you into. And on this National Lutheran Schools Week, as we're celebrating and really focusing on the schools, that, the ministry that happens within our schools, on this National Lutheran Schools Week, living out the relationships that we have with Jesus, it might look like for teachers, it might look like modeling to our students and showing how important prayer is, giving your worries and your concerns and your burdens to God. On this National Lutheran Schools Week, living out your relationship with Jesus, it, it might look like Sunday school teachers talking about the peace that they have because of Jesus Christ, their Savior. Living out your relationship this week on National Lutheran Schools Week, it, it might look like for parents or for grandparents, it might look like modeling and living out the life, the forgiveness that Jesus Christ has freely given you and, and showing that to your kids, showing that to your grandkids. Being connected to Jesus in order to bear fruit in this world is more than just knowing about him. It's more than just having head knowledge, but it's knowledge that affects your hearts, that affects your hands, as you live out that relationship. And so maybe this morning as you're hearing me talk, maybe you say, well, if it's not about what I do, and it's, if it's not about what I know, how do I bear fruit in this world? How am I a fruitful branch connected to the true vine in Jesus? What does that look like? Well, our, our, our theme verse for this school year is John 15, verse 5. And again, it says, Jesus, he says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me will bear much fruit. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. Today, Jesus is inviting you to remain in him, to abide in him, to remain connected to him. Jesus Christ, out of his great love for you, he's connected himself to you. He saw a world overcome by sin, overcome by darkness. He saw lost people like you and me. And Jesus Christ has come to this world to connect himself to you, to call you in, into God's family, to make you his child through the gift of baptism. Jesus has connected himself to you, and that connection that Jesus Christ has made to you, it's a connection that's stronger than death. It's a connection that's stronger than the sins, the mistakes of your past. The connection that Jesus has given you is life. He's connected you to his family, calling you to be his child. And this life that Jesus gives you is completely free. There's nothing you have to do to earn this life that Jesus freely gives you. And just like a plant in this world, I'm not a pro gardener by any means, but I know that plants, when you're growing plants, the branches don't do anything special to grow fruit. The, the branches, they simply receive the nutrients of the roots. They, they, they simply receive, through photosynthesis, the sunlight as they grow, and they receive that nutrients, and that creates fruit that allows the plants to be healthy and grow fruit. 
So the question is, how do, how do we bear fruit for Jesus in this world? How do we bear fruit being connected to Jesus? It looks like being connected to him. It looks like remaining and receiving from him. Receiving and remaining in Jesus, it looks like what we're doing here this morning. We're, we're gathering around his word, hearing his promises of life, his forgiveness for you. Remaining and resting in Jesus, remaining and receiving from Jesus, it looks like what we're going to do in a little bit, where we gather around his gifts and take part of the gift of his sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper, receiving and remaining in Jesus. It looks like what Mary and Martha did as they gathered around Jesus, sitting at his feet, hearing words of life that he freely gives. And the more that we receive from Jesus, the more that we receive as we remain connected to Jesus, the more our lives are filled with his grace and mercy, the more that we begin to manifest the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Today, Jesus, he invites you to continue to remain in him, to continue to receive the gifts of life and forgiveness and mercy and grace that he has for you. And the more that you receive from Jesus, the more that you remain connected to him, the more that we begin to see the fruits of the Spirit growing and manifesting in our lives. Today I invite you, Bethany, to continue to be connected to him, to continue to remain and receive from the true vine, Jesus, the one who gives you life. Now may the grace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may he guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have the opportunity to confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I invite you to please rise as we confess with one voice and one heart. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as we now have a video highlighting the highlights of our school ministry this past year.
We continue our service by going to our Heavenly Father in prayer, and I invite you to please rise as we give him our worries, our concerns, our joys. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day on the beginning of National Lutheran Schools Week and the work that you do through your teachers and staff, um, forming kids to be disciples of you in this world. Continue to raise up these students, that they may continue to learn about you, that they may remain connected in you continuing to hear the words of love and promise for them through your son, Jesus. Father, you have connected us to you through the gift of baptism as you've called us into your family. And today we rejoice and celebrate with those who are remembering the day when they were claimed by you at the font. And today we especially lift up Sarah, Jean, Mason, Bunny, Eric, Cheryl, Michael, Larry, Ken, Jonah, Max and Terry. Father, continue to be with them and continue to guide them by your spirit to continue to remain in you and stay close to your word and your promises for them. Father, we also give thanks for the healthy birth of Sloan to Hoyt and Kylie and continue to be with the Banks family. And Father, we pray that you work in Sloan's life, that she may be led to the font to be claimed by you and welcomed in your family, which has no end. Gracious Lord, we give thanks for the many missions and ministries that happen here at Bethany Lutheran Church School and Preschool. And Father, we give thanks for our mission of the month, Project 1020, where we're serving those in our communities who are in lack of shelter during this winter cold months. Father, we ask that you continue to open our eyes and ears to be your hands and feet in our communities, that we may continue to be lights of this world, shining your love into a world filled with darkness. Father, we pray that through our ministry efforts that others may know Jesus Christ for them. Heavenly Father and gracious Lord, we ask that you pour out your comfort upon um, those grieving the loss of Susan in this world. Continue to be with Susan's family and friends as they mourn her loss if you have, as you have called her home this past week. In the midst of their grief and sadness, allow them to continue to rest in you find comfort and strength in you and the promises of life that you've given us, promises of life even greater than death. Heavenly Father, we have many people today in our hearts and minds in need of your healing. And today we especially lift up Jereen, Martha, Ted, Dick. Father, continue to be with them and continue to be with their families. Give them peace and comfort in this difficult time. Father, uh, Continue to work with the doctors and nurses that are working with them, Lord. And we ask that if it is your will, that they would receive healing that comes from you. And Heavenly Father, we also ask that you continue to be with those couples who are expecting a new son or daughter soon. Be with Keith and Courtney, Brett and Brianna, Connor and Sarah, and Molly and myself. Continue to watch over these expectant mothers and babies throughout the rest of their pregnancies, that they may continue to have good health. And gracious Lord, as these children are brought into this world, we ask that they may be led to your font, to be claimed by you, and made your children. Father, we ask all this in your Son's holy and precious name, and we now pray the prayer together that your Son, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Bethany, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. So true. Thank you. You may be seated. I will now commune those who will be participating in the distribution of the Lord's Supper first, and then we will commune you all.
please rise. And now that you see the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of all your sins, may it strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart now in our Savior's peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we thank you for a chance to gather in your house to worship and praise you. We thank you for this meal that you prepared before us, the meal of the bread and the wine, your body and blood, where we taste and eat the forgiveness of sins for us. Father, as we're getting ready to depart this place, allow us to leave as fed and nourished children of you, knowing that we are connected to you. We are connected to the life Jesus has won for us. Allow us to be led by your spirit to remain and continue to receive from you. We ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Here's the blessing of our Lord to you from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto all of you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Savior say thy strength in me is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thy all in all sing Jesus Jesus made it Just pay.